I was one and a half years old when my family discovered that I had been teaching myself to read. From the back seat of the family pickup truck on a road trip, I sat with a map unfolded across my small lap. The map was larger than me, and I sat reading the names of cities on the map. Once I had exhausted the names I could pronounce, I then began reading street signs that were passing as we drove down the road. You can imagine the shock, awe, and surprise of the adults who had no idea that I, at the age of one and a half, could even read. Wow, that's so strange. I didn't know they could do that. What is hyperlexia? And what does having this brain language processing difference mean for those who are hyperlexic? I'm a hyperlexic autistic, and this week I am going to be sharing my experience with hyperlexia, what hyperlexia is, and what that means for those of us who are hyperlexic. If you would like to know more, please do stay tuned. Welcome back. Before we go too much further, I want to give a definition of hyperlexia and I'm going to give a medical definition and then I'm going to go back and humanize what it's like to be a person who experiences hyperlexia. Today I'm going to be talking specifically about hyperlexia 2, which is hyperlexia occurring with autistic people specifically according to WebMD, which is where I'm going to get the definition today. People with hyperlexia 2 are often, air quotes, obsessed with numbers and letters, preferring books and magnetic letters over other types of toys. They are also frequently remember important numbers such as license plates and birth dates. Mm. These children usually have more typical autism signs such as avoiding eye contact and affection or being sensitive to sensory stimuli. Of course. Right off the bat, looking at that definition of hyperlexia 2, the one thing that is very, very true for me here is preferring books and magnetic letters over toys and other types of things to play with as a child. My magnetic letters and my guardian's magnetic poetry were some of my favorite things to play with on our refrigerator in my childhood home growing up. The other thing I would do is I would sit for hours alone listening to and reading books. I had some of those little cassette tapes when you would put it in and listen to it along with the book. Also, eventually, once I learned to read, I didn't need the cassette tape to read for me. But books, reading, and words were literally one of my first autistic interests, one of my first autistic, air quotes, obsessions. I was obsessed with learning all of the words. I think it's interesting that it also says that we remember important numbers such as license plates and birth dates. I am really bad at remembering birth dates. That is not true for me, at least with birth dates. But my partner and I are constantly talking about and noticing license plates and making words out of them. I don't necessarily remember. I wish I could remember. I can't remember my license plate number for my vehicle. I have to go look at it every time I have to write it down. I can't remember it. And it's only seven numbers. I don't know. I can't remember it. So I don't remember license plates. But signs, numbers, anything with words or letters, it does stick out to me and grab my attention. I find anything with text or print or numbers to be very distracting to me if I need to be focusing on anything else because it's just like, bing, over here, over here, look at me over here. Some important notes I want to make sure I say before moving on that you can be hyperlexic and not be autistic. That's really important to note. Although among autistic children, uh, according to WebMD, they estimate that 6 to 14% of us have hyperlexia or hyperlexic as well as being autistic. 
it says that approximately 84% of children with hyperlexia are also autistic. If you're hyperlexic, it's likely you're autistic, but not necessarily true. And if you're autistic, you have a higher chance of being hyperlexic, but it's not the majority of autistic people who are hyperlexic. The majority of hyperlexic people are autistic. Being autistic means you are likely not just autistic. If you're autistic, many of us have more than one neurotype in addition to being autistic. I'm autistic. I am hyperlexic. I'm ADHD. I have an anxiety disorder in addition to the other physical health problems that I have. Well, you can be autistic and hyperlexic. You can be autistic and dyslexic. You can be autistic and dyspraxic. You can be autistic and apraxic. A lot of these things that can come with being autistic are going to impact language, communication, and motor control. Hyperlexia is a communication difference that impacts the way I process communication. My reading comprehension has always been far above my spoken comprehension. I don't know how much of this has to do with the fact that I also have auditory processing disorder, which means I don't process spoken speech accurately, word for word. Sometimes people talking sound like the teacher from Charlie Brown, especially in a busy or loud environment, such as a school, office, or other place where human beings gather. These things impact the ingoing, ingoing communication. The hyperlexia is me taking in communication through my eyes. I am much more adept at taking in communication through my eyes than through my ears. Because I am ADHD, in addition to being autistic and hyperlexic, the executive functioning, the ability to hold details in my head is tricky. So being able to have something that I can process visually and having the book or the visual notes with me to take away is just so much better for my ability to take in and process information. The other thing about hyperlexia is I am not just impacted on how I process incoming information. My outgoing communication is much better in writing than it is spoken. A lot of the videos that I do are me scripting or talking about things I've already spoken about before. So I am remembering things that I've written and I'm sharing my written communications. As an autistic person, I did a lot of this growing up and used it for scripting and creating these social scripts and planning out all of these possible conversations. Like, oh, the conversation goes this way. I'll say this and then I'll say this. And trying to always be a step ahead of where the conversation is going to go through these elaborate scripts and scenarios I would write out as a young person. I would say being hyperlexic has been a good thing for me. Having advanced reading and vocabulary skills was a skill that I made great use of throughout my life and have definitely benefited from. At the same time, there were some parts of being hyperlexic that were difficult. For one, being hyperlexic and having an advanced reading level and an advanced vocabulary often meant that whenever I did struggle in other ways, in other topics or with other subjects or other tasks, I was scolded and chastised because I was perceived as being wise beyond my years. Adults around me expected me to be a well-rounded individual. <laughs> Since I was reading at college level and speaking like a little professor, there wasn't a lot of tolerance for me, air quotes, acting my age. I was an elementary school student, but a lot of times adults expected me to act and behave and have self-control of someone who was much older, which meant I got in trouble a lot. Good at reading, 
teachers couldn't understand why I wasn't also really good at math and really good at history and really good at every subject I tried to do. But I was just really good at reading and that was my thing. I was constantly scolded for not being really good at everything else and told that I just needed to apply myself, just needed to try harder. You're too smart for this stuff. Those kinds of comments my entire childhood telling me, try harder. You're not trying enough. You're not applying yourself. That's why I am an overachieving perfectionist who doesn't know my own limits and is constantly pushing myself past my limits until I make myself mentally and physically ill. Yeah. This is the end of the video. If you have made it this far, if you could please go ahead and hit that thumbs up like button. That way I know you made it all the way to the end of the video and I didn't lose you. That's very helpful to me. Let me know if you yourself are hyperlexic, dyslexic, or another neurotype. If you're autistic or not autistic, it's really interesting how all of these different neurotypes can occur. Even within one neurotype, as I said, many of us have multiple neurotypes going on. Thank you everyone for hanging out today, for watching the entire video, for commenting, for sharing. If you are giving your video suggestions, I'm grateful for those, your feedback, your suggestions. Of course, I'm grateful to the Patreon subscribers, the YouTube channel members, the Facebook supporters, and the Twitter super followers, that little monetary subscription to help fund this blog paying for things like website hosting, transcriptioning software, the technology that this blog is created on. I could not possibly do this without you, each and every one of you, whether you're supporting monetarily or in other ways. I am incredibly grateful for you. I just always want to make sure to say thank you. This blog is truly made possible thanks to the support of you, my viewers. I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.